This is an introduction to diagramming arguments designed for Philosophy 6 at Las Positas College, and it goes along with the Hurley, a concise introduction to logic textbook, which hopefully you have been reading, as well as doing the learning logic tutorials. If you haven't done the learning logic tutorial or read the section yet, I'd advise you to do that first. I will do a quick review of the material, um, but in addition to that, my main goal here is to supply you with some extra tools for solving some of these problems and showing you some of the pitfalls as well. So if you have some familiarity, that will help. If you don't, that's fine as well. So I want to review really quickly the four basic patterns that Hurley presents for how we diagram arguments. Hopefully this is a bit of a review for you now. So the first one to say something about is the vertical pattern. So you remember that for each one of these methods, we always have something above, which is a premise. And the premise is going to support some conclusion. But this pattern can be linked in a chain such that the premise for one argument is the conclusion for another, which in turn becomes a premise for another conclusion, which in turn becomes a premise for another conclusion. And he refers to this generally as the vertical pattern. Now, there's also in contrast to this the horizontal pattern. The horizontal pattern is where the premises are all stacked up like this. So you have a premise here, premise here, and a premise here. And each one of these premises is feeding into the conclusion. And they're giving separate bits of evidence to support the conclusion. Now, Hurley goes on to point out that sometimes the premises will be conjoint. If the premises are conjoint, it just means that this premise and this premise are all need to be taken together. That's what is indicated by the brackets to support the conclusion. Um, an example would be something like if one of your premises was, if I go to the store, then I will get bagels. And the conclusion was, I'll get bagels. Well, the premise that's an if-then, only supports the conclusion if I have something added to it. So if I said, premise one, if I go to the store, I'll get bagels. Premise two, I'm going to the store. Conclusion, I'll get bagels. Those two have to work together in order to get the inferential power to support the conclusion. Now, a final basic building block for the diagrams is when you have multiple conclusions. Now you remember from previous lectures that um, for simplicity, logicians tend to think about arguments as having only one conclusion. That's sort of a simplification, and it's not a necessary principle to use when thinking about arguments. And when we're thinking about complex arguments, it's worthwhile to think about um, the ways argumentative structure can actually support multiple conclusions. Um, so it's at least possible to be in a situation where we have one premise that supports two conclusions. That teacher is a great guy, premise, therefore you should take his class and you should vote for him as teacher of the year. Only one premise is necessary to give some evidence to both of those conclusions in an argument that works like that. So this is the basic building blocks of these patterns. Obviously, they can be built on top of each other with any level of complexity. And that's one of the things that I want to show you here is kind of the process of working through and asking yourself the kinds of questions that you need to figure out more complex argumentative structures. Here's an example of an argument someone might make. If you love me, then you will marry me. You do love me. Therefore, you will marry me. Now, for simplicity, I've organized these into three text boxes so I can kind of move these around and rearrange them to think about what the structure of the argument is going to be.
So I could start by asking myself, well, what's the conclusion of the argument? Is the conclusion, you love me? Am I trying to prove that? Am I trying to prove that if you love me, you'll marry me? Doesn't look like it. It seems like that's just asserted. Or am I trying to show that you will marry me? I think this probably fits best as the conclusion, so let's put it down here at the bottom. So how should we think of these premises? Um, is one of them perhaps supporting the other? Is the fact that um, if you love me, you will marry me supported by you do love me? I don't think so. The fact that you love me doesn't give me evidence that if you love me, you'll marry me. What about the reverse of this? Does the claim that if you love me, you'll marry me prove that you love me? Hmm. I don't think so. So it looks like these are going to be two premises side by side in a horizontal pattern. Now what do you think? Do each of these premises go in there to support the conclusion independently? Or for their power to support the conclusion, do they need to be taken together as a single unit? Well, let's try each of them one at a time and see what makes more sense. Um, this one is a conditional. So on its own, all it says is, if you love me, you will marry me. But that doesn't seem like good evidence that you will marry me unless we add to it the conjoint evidence that you do in fact love me. So taken together, these might be thought to offer some evidence for the conclusion. Um, and this might offer some evidence for the conclusion on its own. But this, standing alone, it's just a conditional, and it only has inferential power if the antecedent is asserted, right? So only if the if-then turns out to be true, like it does here, is there any power for an if-then conditional to support a conclusion. So in this case, it looks like we got a pretty good diagram for this argument here. Here's premise one, here's premise two. They use their power together to feed into the conclusion. And taken together, these illustrate a principle that I definitely want you to keep in mind, which is that these diagrams organize themselves as long as you remember that's that evidence to show that a claim is true, always goes above the claim that it's meant to support. And if you keep this basic single building block in your mind at all times and you keep asking yourself, is that how these elements are arranged? The diagrams will actually sort of work themselves out and organize themselves using that principle.